Hello everyone and welcome back to another video with your boy Dracon. Now today we're going to be getting into a, as you can see here, a wyvern. This is from the Sands and Stone set from uh, Wizards of the Coast. I know I never said I was going to get back into the like boosters, but you know, I actually got a good deal on this where I got the Sands and Stone wyvern here plus the models here and some promotional wyvern babies. And I'll talk about the price overall. Um, so this will be a kind of a double hit on the price wise because it was part of a deal with the sand and stone it was actually around like 120 bucks which isn't too bad for a booster set plus you're getting the premium and plus you're getting some promotional little wyverns that usually would cost you around like 10 bucks a piece so i was like in the end overall since they usually these boosters have been going for set like over 130 and above not a bad deal and that's like you know that was premium. now hopefully this premium is worth the effort yeah, now I did turn the box around just because I wanted to show off like the Saint Stone set it comes from. Now, let's talk a little bit about wyverns before we get into the box, maybe. Or you know what? We'll save it till we get inside. Cause I really want to open this up. You guys have seen my last videos on like the Hydra from the Obelisk and the Maw of Sokola and all of those other things. And I've been loving the premiums I've been throwing out because it really looks like Wizard of the Coast has been really bumping up production quality and making some really nice pieces. Well, Let's hope and continue this trend stays. So let's get into the Sands and Stone Wyvern. So here we have the big boy all out. Now, as you can see, his wings are detached. I kind of figured based on how his uh, pose was, they didn't put him in there with the wings attached because they would have had way too much, uh, you know, vertical rays going on there for that box's height. And I think that makes sense, but I like what I'm looking at here. So first off, all the bad, as we can see, it's bigger than I expect it to be, which is good. I'm sick of wyverns always being tiny. And I like the tongue that's going on there. The teeth look good. The horns are nice. We got that cobra-esque hood going on there, which is good. Because I actually like that fact. Wyvern, you can see the wings are just simply poppins. And I will pop it in here in about a second. I just want to say from first appearance how good it looks. And here he is assembled with his wings on. Uh, they're not pushed in all the way. This is in case I want to store them a little bit easier. I do see why they did that in the box. There's not as much space as you'd think. But I got to say, so let's look at this wyvern. As you can see, fully assembled, he's pretty big. And I'm liking this. He actually, and I know it sounds weird, he reminds me of the Monster Hunter, Rathalos, like, or Rathion. Like, he's this big, aggressive wyvern-esque dragon or lesser dragon. He looks good. Now, I know what you're saying. There's not a ton of detail. Yeah, they did kind of just paint him mostly a single color. And, I mean, he is a wyvern, so it's not super weird. Don't worry, guys. I will be comparing him to some other wyverns in a second here. That's coming. But I love the tail detail. You can see that tail detail right there. That looks really good. I do like how they make that lovely barb on the effect there. It looks nice. He's got them nice big feet because I've always thought, like, the original wyvern, the feet were way too small for this creature's size. Because, like, you need big feet to stand on when you have only two legs. If dinosaurs have taught us anything, big feet are important for, you know, balance. And I do like this creature. I love the design. I like the long tongue. Everything looks good. I kind of wish there was a little bit more style on him. I wish the hood had a little bit more color. Like, the underside is not even any different. He's literally matte all the way around, which is kind of sad. But overall, though, the paint applications are good. There's just that right amount of, like, shading, weathering. I love the, like, little tearing look in the wings. I mean, a wyvern getting to huge class means it's become, like, an ancient wyvern. Wyverns don't get gargantuan. They do get huge, though. If they grow long enough, I know wyverns uh, grow for a long time, if I remember properly and correctly. But now I will say this, would I pay a top dollar for him? Well, I think the price range for this, what I would probably pay. He's a good wyvern, definitely great. He could work for a big bad in a campaign as evil. I mean, once they get to huge class, which I know he has a large ring in there, you can see it. I ignore that with these things. I would say this is just like a true alpha wyvern. Like this is an ancient wyvern would be a good way to do it or like... I guess you'd call them full adult wyvern because, I mean, here's the thing. Wyverns are despised by a lot of creatures, even by dragons who see them as irritations because they're lesser kin that just are in the way or they're annoying to deal with. They get in the way and, you know, drive away prey. But I got to say, I really do like this creature. Now, it really looks good. I love the dynamic pose. Now, I unfortunately don't have my original wyvern that I have from uh, D&D. That like I would use for um, comparison. He's in the drawer of my drag, my smaller dragons. 
And unfortunately, he's like very tiny. I always said that about the original Wyvern. It's so small. It doesn't even look like it's bigger to pick up a human, like, let alone really fight one efficiently. Because I feel a group of would just kick a Wyvern down really fast. This one, though, makes a Wyvern truly a terror. Let's do some comparisons, though, shall we? And see how it looks compared to some other Wyverns. Here we have a lovely upper close shot. Sorry about that, guys. I should have gotten close the first time. But as you can see, here he is next to one of the Pathfinder Wyverns. I was lucky enough to get my hands on in a set from them. Or I bought this from Miniature Market. I can't remember where, but as you can see, it looks good next to him. I mean, like, honestly, the Wyvern from uh, Pathfinder on the right there was one I liked more than the D&D &D Wyvern. And when people ask, like, why would you choose the blue one? You know, it doesn't scream Wyvern as much. I go, well, I use them like a Seacoast Wyvern. Like, you know, more of the Oceanic Coast. Like, that blue helps it blend or something. Or I just make up stuff. Like maybe it's a deep wyvern that lives underground where the color doesn't matter. Stuff like that. But now, comparatively, they look both good next to each other. Now, you can see Pathfinder with more of a normal-esque wyvern, like the thin neck, all that. Once again, wyverns have different variations, too. I could easily see this as being, like, a desert wyvern over there on the left for this one. And on the right, like I said, a coastal wyvern. You know, they have different variations they are going to develop over time. But like I said, uh, just like it's a Pathfinder friend there, it does have those ripplings in the wings. It's even got some holes in there, which is good. The Like I said, unfortunately, you just can't see the eyes. I've tried to get them zoomed in, but it just doesn't work. They're just so light detail. Now, as you can see, though, the paint application on this Wyvern is quite lovely. Let's take a look from the back side. Here we are with a quick shot of the both on the back. Uh, the back of the Wyvern, as you can see, looks really good. The red continues all the way down. The wings keep it all the way up just like the other Wyvern. And you can see it's still good. Now, is this Wyvern perfect? Eh, I don't know. I wouldn't say maybe perfect or not, but let's compare it to a Wizard's Wyvern before we get to the final thoughts, as well as maybe another quick pricing gloss over. So here we have it next to another Wizards of the Coast product. This is the Wyvern from the Unpainted line. I know what you're thinking. That's a pretty good size Wyvern, Drake. I'm why are you complaining? Well, like I said, the other one was from the Monster Menagerie line. That one was tiny. Plus, I like this Wyvern's pose a little better. The wings are a little bit more wrapped than the other one in a way where they're not going to bend and hopefully warp. The Stinger looked better on this one. It also had that nice, lovely sitting on a rock pose, which always looks better. Now, as you can see, there's still a size discrepancy, aren't we? The head is super huge next to the other Wyvern where it's also very big. Let's put an adventure there just so, or some medium creature so we get a good size scaling. So here we have a Goliath uh, chef I brought out. He's from a purchase I made on eBay for a quick mini because I just needed a good chef Goliath because I have needed that for a couple of campaigns. I didn't have one. Love the giant fork. But like here you can see there's a big giant kin level humanoid next to these guys. And as you can see, this is definitely more of what I want to see from the Wyverns. This scale that they are definitely these big monsters that are a threat. I mean, just my large class Wyvern on the right the, or the left side there, he is already a terrifying threat that looks like a group of adventurers would have to fight and take him down. The one on the right there looks like the same thing. So we're not losing out. Now, head to head size, yeah, this Wyvern's head and body proportions, like, and I'm not talking wings, body proportion wise, everything it's got is at least double the size of the other one. The Stinger's more pronounced and more kind of, you know, badass, I gotta be honest with you. The scaling pattern is a lot more defined. The wings are definitely, I think, at least. A little bit bigger. They're not super big as you think they are. Like the Wyvern's wings are big, but they're curled, so it's hard to. It was hard for me to kind of put them together. It's they are slightly bigger, and I'd say like probably by maybe not as much though, not double the size on that one. So this would probably help explain Wyverns are not really the best flying creatures. Like you're not going to use a Wyvern to outfly a Griffin, because Griffins are just a more maneuverable. Unlike the Wyvern, who's a little bit more straight on type flying style. But you can see, though, next to a human character or humanoid in this situation, it's a good model. Now, is this going to be the big bad of your campaign? It could be if you wanted to just simply have, like, I don't know, an evil wizard or some type of a dark ruler who keeps a wyvern under lock and key and uses it as a weapon. Maybe he breeds them so he has an army of wyverns at his disposal. Something like that. This could be a cool big bad of either, like, the big mother or the big father, like, type deal that comes out. Or maybe, like, the uh, Sorcerer transforms into this as, like, his last hurrah. He turns into a Wyvern as his final chance to win and defeat the good guys. Now, I will say this. Is it perfect? No. there's It's not perfect. But it is really good. I mean, I painted the Jabberwocky and other dragons, and I made mine kind of more monotone-ish looking. Like, I'd done single paint styles like this. But the difference is, 
I am using like the two-tone paints. I don't know if WizKids does that with their products. I don't know if they uh, hit theirs with their new contrast paints, like the new thing coming out. So, I mean, it makes even these single tones look a lot different. Now, it's still a great paint job. Don't get me wrong. I looked at it. There's not a lot of overflash on the talons and the claws. Like everything is pretty clean. It's a pretty clean application. I like how it went more with the red, though. I do actually kind of like that because I feel in the desert, a reddish coloration isn't too weird. There's a lot of reddish colors in the desert, a lot of browns and reds. My wyvern's more of like just a simple. I made him to be based off the uh, WizKids wyvern, and I just wanted to outclass it, which I think I did with my paint job on that one. But yeah, I'm definitely glad to add another dragon to the old collection. I know what you're thinking, but are wyverns really a dragon? They are. They're just a lesser dragon. And probably not as powerful. Like, I mean, honestly, when a group gets to go kill a wyvern, is the difficulty super high? Well, if your group's a good group and they're really well built, no, they'll wreck this kind of wyvern in a fight super easy. But because of how big he is, you could easily say, like, oh, he snags a player and drops him off of, like, a rise and he's down a cliff or something. And now he's got to climb himself back up first. And, you know, this could be tricks you do to make your wyvern more fights more interesting. Or you could have these... You could take my two wyverns like I've got right here and put them on as a pair. Maybe the male and female are here. And it's like maybe your mission is to literally harvest only the male, not the female or something. Or kill the female, not the male. Or you could just simply say they both got to go. Totally Monster Hunter style that where it's like kill a Rathalus and a Rathion at the same time. Get rid of them. Like, you know, there's tons of options that wyverns are good for. They're a good creature. They're such a basic monster. Like, a wyvern is always known about in D&D. You've never heard of campaigns when they don't have wyverns to be, like, that's a little more unusual. Unless you're in, like, the Frozen Norse, I guess, where wyverns are probably more rare. But, like, honestly, I think getting a wyvern like this would not be the worst idea. I would recommend him, guys. He's a great sculpt, great paint job. Mine didn't have any damage. The box came perfectly shaped. And as you can see, he's just a nice piece. You could actually put him on the shelf, and he would be a pretty cool piece. Heck, if you had Monster Hunter models out, he could sit right next to him and still look pretty cool. I mean, he looks really good. And with the new Monster Hunter Wilds coming out, I know I'm giving it a mention, this guy looks like he'd be something from there with the Cobra-esque style and the Wyvern coolness going on. Now, overall, like I said in the price, it's hard to price this guy out. I have seen him uh, out separately in other by himself pricings and people have been wanting around like 40 bucks for this guy. Hmm. I'm not sure 40 is good. I think 35 is that sweet spot. I think that's the perfect number. 35 is good. It looks good. It is good. But let's be honest, guys. It's simply a big wyvern. It's a wyvern that honestly, I don't think it could fit on a huge, a large base. So it being on a huge base, I think is perfect. I wish WizKids would stop doing these little secondary lines inside. Because let's be honest, like when I get dragons of the same thing, I just call them sub-adult dragons where it's like they're not adult, but they're not really juvenile or young either. They're like that mid-between, like they can still reproduce, but they can still, you know, have adult stats. Or at least like in the combat stats. Maybe I debuff their health stat a little bit, but you know, in the end it works. This wyvern though, I think it deserves to be on the huge base. And I love, and I mean, I literally love the flight base. Man, I have been so glad that WizKids has been keeping up with this flight base issue they had before where they were just pegs and they were always breakable and so annoying. But this one, I don't have any issue with that. I'm not worried. Look how thick that is. It's got the coverage and it works, in my opinion, with that nice swoop effect. It looks so much better. Now, um, like I said, I'd pay 35 for this all day long. This Wyvern's a glorious piece to add to your collection. I give it two thumbs up. It looks great. It's got that lovely snarl going. It's a beast. Now, if you've come this far on the channel, I thank you very much. Always, guys, make sure you hit that like button to help the channel grow. And make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already. And share this with your friends to help the channel grow in general so we can get more. So I have more incentive to bring you guys lovely videos like this. So you're not like coming and going, hmm. I don't know about this beast. Is it worth the money? This way you're not also getting stiffed when these companies like to go, yeah, it's totally worth like $60. And it's like, uh, no. Would I pay more than 40 bucks for this thing? Absolutely not. I would probably not pay more than 40. Like more than 40. 40 is the top level. I would say 35 is the good number for this creature. It's a nice premium. Don't get me wrong. But in the end it's still just a wyvern. We're not getting something superbly unique like a hydra or a drag or full like greater dragon. But it does look good. Don't get me wrong. 
Anyway, guys, like I said, if you haven't done so, make sure you uh, wyvern sting that subscribe and like button. Throw a comment down below if you got any ideas, comments, concerns, or if you just want to have a shout out. Whatever you guys want to do, man. You want to say hi? I'll say hi back to you. I'm good with that. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's all I've got for today. Dracon signing off. See you next time. Bye-bye.